Hi everyone, I'm Bruno Caillou. I'm a filmmaker in Unreal Engine. I love to share my passion with you. And today, together, we learn to do this. So this tutorial will be in two parts. In the first part, we make an animation with the Unreal mannequin and we attach it a camera to get a first POV. In the second part, we improve the first POV in order to gain credibility and immersion. Here we go, start the Epic Launcher and then a launch a project with your current engine. Then select a film blank starter content and ray tracing if you are a LTX card. And we call the project tuto underscore pov underscore action. The project is launched, so you can click OK for the update. In the first time, we delete all the elements we don't need. You can erase instant foliage actor, then player start and sphere reflection capture. If you have a good computer, you can select a light source and then check movable. And that's all. Now we add a character. So click on add. Add feature or cotton pack. Third person. Add to project. The project is now on, so you can close the dialog box. So we need to create a level sequence. To do this, we go to the top left on the small clap, you press it, uh, add level sequence. Right click, new folders. And there we will create a cinematic folder. Then we will save it under tuto underscore pov underscore action. Here the sequencer is loaded. Now we need a character. We will retrieve what we added earlier. You go to characters, mannequin, then meshes, and we'll choose money. You drag it into the scene. The shaders will compile, this no more. Then we will prepare how level a bit. What do we want? So for this tutorial, we are going to run Manny, jump him into a platform below and run him again. We will put it in a starting position. That's it, very good. You select it, you go to the sequencer, then track, add to sequencer. Add iskm underscore money. You can see that money is rigged. We are absolutely no interest in this tutorial. You select CR mannequin body in the sequencer and delete it. We are going to add animations already made. Now we are going to prepare our level. We are going to duplicate the floor. You select it. It appears highlighted in yellow. Ctrl D. You move it. You take it down. All right. It's a good jump height throw, about twice its size. Perfect. Next, we will remove the disturbing grind. We go to show, grind, we unchecked. We want money from point A to point B. So to do this, you go to the minus transform, add a key to the little dot. This is starting point. We are going to advance to about 45 frames and we are going to advance it to the end of the platform. So normally, money is moving, but there are no animations assigned to him yet. So we go to the animation plus animation. We will make it run. We will take the second MM run forward. So, and money starts running. You will notice that there is a small slip at the beginning. 
it's not very serious. You select both keys, you right click on one of the keys, linear, and normally money no longer slips. They are arrived at the edge. Mani will want to jump. We will add our animation. This will be the jump animation. All right. You take it uh, and you blend it uh, with the run animation. And you see it jumps. All right. It jumps from there. Okay. Up. What we are going to do is we are going to step back. You see, what matter is the running block. You see, what matters is the running animation block. And thanks to this little controller, you can lengthen the blend or shrink it. I want to shrink it so that it jumps earlier. Eventually, I would like him to jump to where we determine it. So what I'm going to do is move my jump. Me, I want him to shrink it to jumps earlier. Eventually, I would like him to jump to where we determined. We start the jump a little bit before. Up. He takes the impulse, flies away. We will say is at the top of his jump. You see here, there is a trigger and then it drops. So here, let's say it's the summit of his lip. So we are going to select money. We are going to make it jump. Now you are going to think money is floating. You select the pawn that was before. You bring him down with his foot on the ground to get support and suddenly it's magic. And there you will tell me, wow, it jumps a little hard. You take the second key point, you move it to the right which will lessen the animation time. Well, he's been doing a moment which is not bad. I think that in the end, I went a little too far. So, we are going to make him jump a little less high and go a little less far. This is much more correct. Then, after the jump, money will fall. We are going to add an animation of fall. You will go up for the blender with a jump. You can shrink this animation because it won't fall for two hours. So we go back to our point where he was at the top and we are going to say that he falls. He falls and he lands at the end of the false animation. So. We select it, we bring it down. Here, as you can see, there is its translation curve that has adjusted. So we go straight, uh, it jumps and it falls. The curve is rather pretty, we will keep that. And once the money has fallen, what will happen? It's starting running again. We are going to move a few key forwards. We take money, we move him forward. Here, he runs, he runs, he jumps, he falls. We are going to add the little animation of run. I think you are understood the principle. We return to animation, animation, run, run forward. All right, uh, let me see it a bit. Let's see what happens. Uh, it's not bad. You did see? At one point, the feet pass through the ground. It's not serious. We will be able to correct him just afterwards because in the end, he has his feet on the ground. So we take the end key because in the end, I'm a little too low. We put our feet on the ground and normally it should work. Yes. There's still a foot which pass through. It's not very serious too. That is to say that here we are too low. The back foot is in the ground. We will raise it. Well, it's pretty good. This is an example for the tutorial so that you understand how animation blends work and go with the movement of our character. So, 
The learning is good. Mm, let's also sleep a bit. Uh, we will select uh, the two key points. So, right click linear. This is better. We can move the out point of our sequence to the end. And here, bottom left, you can put on loop. Basically, this will answer to the animation. I advise you to click and put it loop, which means that when I start my animation, at the end it resumes. Here, it loops away. It's a loop. Perfect. Now let's attach the camera. To do this, we will click on the camera icon. Now this camera is created, we will change the focal length. For now, we are at 35 mm. We want to have a wide shot to be able to see a little of the hands, the feet, so we are going to use 12 mm. You have seen, all of a sudden, we see a lot more things. Next, now that the camera has been created and we've set the focal lens, we'll attach it. To do this, you go to Cinema Camera Actor, Track, Attach, and you'll choose SKM Many. Then, a drop-down menu appears with all the bones of your character. You will choose Head. The camera is now attached to the head and immediately, the iron offset that is random. I never really understood how he did it, but in any case, the camera is not yet in the character's head. We are going to have to put it there. So, we are going to go out, this process the camera and we are going to step back. You will see your camera and the ID is that we put it straight. Use the rotate tool. Here, if you like a bit of reference, bring up the floor. So, we select the camera. You take possession of the camera and there you go down, turn around your character and you go inside his head. Exactly. So, once say you are in the head, you look for the most interesting place for you. That is to say that when we lower our camera, we would like to be able to see the legs, the arms, the torso. And here it looks good to me. There are no artifacts. The principle is to not have artifacts. That creates artifacts. We don't want it. We advance a little. Look. When I lower the camera too much, we see the inside of the body. It's not interesting. We still advance a little, and there we are reserved very well. Okay, I made a mistake. I didn't zero in to attach the camera. Suddenly, the attachment of the camera is done at frame 46. If I go back, my camera is no longer attached, and when I pass the 46 frames, it's attached. It is not very serious. You can take the grey bar, you stretch it to the left. What is good with this camera attachment is that we'll have the freedom to be able to crop as you wish. For example, we look down, I still have my camera, and we'll be able to look up. This will be my start. Then I will put a I will put on the cinema camera actor at the level of the transform a key point. And then we are going to move forward and we are going to want to look down when we approach the edge. Uh, I'm going to put a key point between the two and up and then here we are going to say that uh, when I arrived at the edge, uh, here it looks a little it looks a little at its feet to see what it happened and it starts to jump. And when it jumps, he lowers his head a little so and when it gets to the ground, he raises his head. So if you lose the bubble a little, like that, it's not a big deal. You unfold the transform, you go to rotation and hit it on the roll that this is set. So, we'll take a look at uh, what we've done. It runs, it jumps, it's great. 
Before concluding this first part of the tutorial, I just wanted to draw your attention to something. Is that uh, when we take the camera off and step back, we can see that our character actually has the camera attached to his head. And when we play the animation, that's it, we see the additional animation that we gave to the camera. He arrives at the edge, the camera lower, he dives again, he tries it. This first part is over. So if you like this video, you can subscribe to my channel in order to view the next one. And if you have any questions, you can let me a comment and I answer you. So see you for the second part.